are back here, Midland Valley. Strom Thurman, the Rebels have the ball. Starting the fourth quarter, second down and nine. Jaquan Harris, the sophomore quarterback with Edwards to his right. They hand it to Jaquan Edwards. Edwards running over one of his own blockers as he picks up the first, uh, well, actually he's gonna be short of the first down. As we continue to get updates on the Notre Dame Georgia game and actually tonight it's the Cubs game where all the Georgia fans are but you didn't I don't know if you caught this coach but during Brian Kelly the Notre Dame football coaches coaches show they had to basically stop the show because all the Georgia fans that are up there were calling the coaches show and they kind of took it over and he basically was imploring the Notre Dame fans not to sell their tickets to Georgia fans oh, wow. they're worried the stadium's going to be a you know half full with Georgia fans tomorrow kind of crazy I'm not even a Georgia fan and that's pretty cool here's Edwards up in the middle Nice run. It's going to be a first down inside the 30. And, well, earlier in the game, we recognized the scholar athlete from Strom Thurmond. Let's take a look at Midland Valley's scholar athlete. He's big number 72. We talked about him earlier. Tyrese Cohen, starting offensive lineman for the Mustangs. He maintains a 3.25 GPA for the uh, Mustangs. Congratulations to our Midland Valley scholar of the game, number 72, Tyrese Cohen. Big fella, there he is right there in the middle of the defense. And they're hoping he can make a play here. Edwards breaking it to the outside and a good job up front. That is number 65. We haven't called his name much tonight, but Quentin Mathis made a nice play there. Big that's, strong kid there. That's a good one-on-one -on -one tackle because yeah. uh, you know, Edwards is a horse, and he, he's, he's tough to bring down. And he tackled him a little bit high, he which is even tougher. High. Shows you how strong Mathis is. If you're just tuning in, a great ball game here is unfolding, and we've had some big hits, big plays. And right now, Strom Thurmond would love to just run this clock as much as they can. They throw a pass. This one's complete. Here's Williams. Tyreek Williams inside the 15. And Harris finally able to get it to one of his receivers. And Williams, he's a load to bring down. Uh, that's kind of a pick your poison with Sean Thurman. you, you, you got to stack the box to try to slow down his running game with Jaquan Edwards. And once you do that, then you leave Tyreek Williams out on the outside one-on-one. -on -one and uh, he's going to be tough for anybody in the state of South Carolina one-on-one. -on -one. And they hand it off. This is Halston trying to get to the outside. He's got room. And let's see, did he get it? Touchdown, I believe. He hit the pylon. They're going to call him down, though. They call him down. He looked like he got inside that pylon to me. I don't know. That's close. Holding. Oh, there's a hold anyway. On the offense. Holding on the offense. That'll be a 10 yard penalty. Remains first down. And so that's going to come back. And boy, if you're Midland Valley, you desperately need to stop here. While we talk about how they play with such great art and all that, they still only have scored one touchdown, so you don't want to fall behind by two here. No, it'll be tough for them to come back, especially with this uh, running game of Thurman. Yeah. They can just chew clock and, and yardage out at will. And that's what they're trying to do. Coach said we've got to run that football. Got a little pass happy in the first half. Here they go to Edwards. Edwards up the middle. Edwards. Inside the 15, down to about the 13. Jaquan, huge night for him. There you see they are in the Augusta Technical College red zone. If well, you missed uh, tonight's game, you can tune in and catch it all starting at noon on Sunday on WJBF News Channel 6 with the rebroadcast. This will be an interesting play call here because you got third and 12. You, you, you can run the ball and just settle for three with the good kicker you have. Uh, you, you would expect to get three points out of this. Or you can put it up in the air, you know, risk a turnover, but you also have one of the better receivers in the area, too, to rely on. So this will be interesting to see what they do here. Hard for me not to hand it to number 30 here, Coach. And it didn't look like they were going to. It looked like they might have been throwing the ball. There's a flag down. It's on Strom Thurman. Legal procedure. Oh, there's delay of game. Excuse me. Delay a game on Strom, so that'll back him up. The Rebels do not want to stop the clock, that's for sure. There's a 
look at Coach Hillary. He looks like he can still get out there and play a little bit. And low snap. Harris has got it. Going to throw it up. Going to try to let his guy Williams make a play. Oh, my gosh, what a catch. There's a flag down. That might be offensive interference, but what a catch by Williams. He may have pushed off pass interference on the offense, and I do think that's the call here. The Middle Valley fans are cheering. Yeah, offensive pass interference. White right team. That's the second touchdown Williams has had called back tonight. He had a kick return, but watch the even a push off. That's still a pretty dang good catch. Let's see here. Yeah, he pushed with the left hand, and he's a left-handed guy. That's a big play as Midland Valley dodged a bullet. You know, if I'm Coach Hillary, I'm coming right back to it. If they're going to guard him one-on-one -on -one out there on the outside, yeah. then you know I'm going right back to that play and letting him make a play on it. It is second and 31, Coach. <laughs> You don't have too many plays drawn up for second and 31. That'll get five of it back. Well, they got five of it back. Yeah, there you go. We were just talking about that before the game, about drawing people off sides, and that was a good time to do it. At least On the defense. Back. And also, five yard penalty. Spell the momentum that was Remain getting. Remain second down. Coach Jenkins can't be too happy with that penalty because yeah. you had them on their heels, and, and now you're going to give up another five yards to them. And Strom Thurmond yelling the signals. I went dead. And they're throwing it deep again. That's out of the back of the end zone. So it is going to be third down in twenty six. Turned out at 26, eight minutes to go in the ball game. Rebels looking to throw. They set up the screen. It's overthrown, incomplete. Well, all those passes keep stopping the clock also. We're saving Midland Valley a little bit here. So it's going to be fourth down. Fourth down. It'd be a, about a 44, 45 yarder. About a 45-yard field goal. And it looks like they are bringing on real. Midland Valley has got to be a deep just in case. And Strom Thurman is going to call a timeout. A Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout. We'll take a break with them. Back with more. And boy, we might have a good finish in store. 21-14, the Rebels lead it, under eight minutes to go. And we're back here, the Midland Valley crowd on their feet as Lawson Real tries to kick the field goal, a 45-yard attempt, it is no good. It is no good, Midland Valley will get the ball back. They trail by seven with about seven minutes and 50 seconds or so to go in this thing. And so they dodge a bullet as, uh, for the second time. First it was the touchdown that was called back. Now it's a missed field goal. And boy, look at Co Coach Hillary, not a happy camper. And the Millen Valley crowd is letting their team hear it right now. Yeah, the Millen Valley's got the crowd behind them. and got a lot of momentum here after that defensive stand. Seven and a half minutes left trying to tie this game up. Well, let's see if Tanner White has... Any more tricks up his sleeve here? Tanner White, the quarterback for Midland Valley, has had an up and down game, but man, he's made some big plays, and Will Sheehan has been his favorite target. Let's see what they do here. 
Back to throw. Going to roll out. Now he's scrambling. He's going to be tackled from behind. Well, he did a good job just to hold on to the football there. As big number 33 for Strom Thurmond. And that is Shaheem Stevens, a senior defensive lineman. And he makes the sack. Midland Valley student section there. And back to throw, going to throw it deep. Got a man down there wide open. Oh, and he dropped it. And he dropped it. That was Sapp, who's had a pretty good game and made a couple of great catches. Coach, that was just a case of trying to turn and run before he got the ball. Yeah, he had a lot of green in front of him, and uh, it was busted coverage by Thurman. Well, you know, that's a touchdown if he comes down with that cleanly. Pretty good throw, pretty good read, and he just dropped it. Yeah, I don't know that. Actually, I might be wrong. I don't know that he tried to turn and run. I think maybe because he was so wide open, it caught him off guard. At first, I thought he was trying to turn and run with the ball and just didn't look it in. But uh, the tough break there. Saps had a good ball game, but dropped a big one there. And they're going to throw it again. They got a man out there. It's caught, but he's hit right as he caught the football. And they pick up six on that one. That is Michael O'Neill, tall receiver. And there's still a lot of time in the game. You don't make no mistakes here. You kick it yeah. back and try to play defense. Um, Miller Valley's going to have to find a way to slow down that running game because now uh, Thurman's going to try to grind the clock and chew it up and then come out of here with the win. Yeah, you see the clock running there, 637 and counting. And they're protecting the punter. Low snap. He gets it off, though, and it's a pretty good punt. Oh, bobbled. Oh, it's bobbled and dropped. Midland Valley has it. Midland Valley has it. Tyreek Williams bobbled it and dropped it. Midland Valley's got the football. Are you what a play me? on special teams by Midland Valley. And that, he just bobbled the football. He was trying to run before he got it, and it bounced right into a Midland Valley player's hands. So that's why, that's one way to get a first down. That's a, yeah. <laughs> One of the Midland Valley coaches being very unkind to a trash can. <laughs> I don't know, getting the crowd pumped up there. Yeah, Tennessee, yeah. Here we go. Oh, White's looking downfield. He's hit as he throws. Oh, dangerous. He had a guy down there, but hit as he threw the football. And, again, this is where you do have to calm down. There's time left. I know you got the momentum, but let's, let's take a deep breath and make a play here. Second and 10, Midland Valley has hung in there all game long. All right, so here we go, Midland Valley, second and 10. Ball is at the 45. Goes the receiver. They're going to throw a quick one. It's caught by Sapp. Now, there he made a great catch. Yeah, that throw, that little slant route again, but that throw was a little behind him. He turned and made a great play on the ball. And yeah. Turned to the outside, got the first down yardage. Sapp held on to that one. And the crowd is letting them hear it. What a great atmosphere here at Midland Valley. Not one of the bigger schools in the area. You'll see bigger crowds at Thompson and North Augusta. But they're into it just as much. They are 42 yards away from possibly tying this thing up. White's going to throw it deep. And threw a jump ball. And he was trying to get it. To number 18, that's Starlings, the sophomore, tall sophomore receiver, but it's incomplete. Thurman continues to get pressure on the quarterback, forcing Tanner White to scramble out wide. And, you know, that play wasn't big, but I, in all honesty, he's made more plays when he scrambled, uh, uh, other than that little rhythm he got in with those slants last possession. Yeah, he's really dangerous on the move, yeah. and, and he's better when he's running. Well. They need a play. They need something. They've gotten plays all throughout the night when they've needed them to hang in there. Uh, and now they got a chance to 
really shocked some folks. Keep Maybe an eye on get... Sheehan here. And that took a long time to develop, but Sheehan is blocking nicely. So another catch by Starlings. It'll be third and about six here. Now, third and six. You're in four down territory, though, so even if you don't get it, if you get close, the problem is they just cannot run the football against this strong no. Thurman defense. The, the so even if you seven. get it close, you're going to be throwing probably. Yeah, the front seven of Thurman is just too strong. We saw that down at the goal line on third down where they decided to go quick and lost yardage, almost lost the football. Here's Tanner White, the junior. Had a couple of miscues with the interceptions, but he's played a good ball game overall. He's going to throw it again. And they set up a nice screen. It's open to the freshman, Pearson. Pearson inside the 25. <laughs> Coach, the freshman making a play. That's a great play call. Yeah, get all that pressure coming your way and dump it over the top of them. Yep. And look at Pearson. I tell you, that's a good-looking ninth grader. And that was a great block by Sheehan to set him free, too. Yeah, Sheehan's played a good all-around game. Blocking, catching, returning kicks. High snap. White's going to throw it out into the flats. They've got a man. There's Sap, Sap inside the 15. Midland Valley knocking on the door. Yeah. David Edwards pointing out every time Coach Hughes comes to a game, we got a barn burner. Yeah, last time at uh, <laughs> at, at Thurman, I think we were there for what, three or four overtime. Yeah, so. yeah. That was an unbelievable game. And here we go. Rolling out. They're throwing it. He's got oh, a man on. Oh, he overthrew it. There's got to be a flag. Yeah. Got to be a flag. That was a hold. Hold or pass interference is one or the other. And there's Sheehan, who's had a great game. Sheehan has returned two long kicks. He's blocked well, and he's caught a bunch of passes. Defensive pass interference. Half the distance to the goal, and first down for Midland Valley. He threw it up, let his receiver try to make a play, and the defensive back made a miscue. Unbelievable. And defensive holding. Hey, this is a... Game, people here, it's 21-14 in the fourth quarter. Midland Valley's got the ball. There are going to be some surprise folks in the CSRA. No knock on Midland Valley, but most people had strong. And they're going to lob it up, let their receiver make a play, and he's got it. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Are you kidding me? What a throw and catch. That's a sophomore receiver, Coach, but I said all game, the tall sophomore, they threw it up and let him make a play. And now we're a PAT away from being a tie ball game here late in the fourth. And Nathan's pointing out he's missed an extra point, but he's made two field goals. So you got to kick it here and tie it. No chance to go for two. Wow, the momentum in this game has shifted big time. Uh-oh, here comes Strom. They get, oh, they almost got it. It's good, though. Woo, that was close. A little too close for comfort there, Coach. Yeah, they had a hard time blocking him off the edge, but the Good snap, good hold, kicker got it off. And yeah, we got us a game. Now, this just shows you anything can happen. That's why you go out and play them. On paper, this did not look like a close game. Last year, it was not a close game. But Midland Valley has come out here tonight and made play after play. And Strom, who had protected the ball all game, special teams, they turn it over. Williams, who had played great, he had two touchdowns called back, but unable to hold the punt earlier. Well, that's two turnovers now by, by Thurman, and both have hurt them. Uh, we had the, the big hit and the fumble yeah. late in the first half, and then this fumble here on the uh, the punt. Is, both turnovers have really hurt Thurman. Well, the quarterback, Tanner White, 18 of 32, 243 yards, and two touchdowns passing, and he's got the two interceptions. But if you look at his numbers, for the first two games, he only had 246 yards and two touchdowns. So he's having himself a big ball game tonight. Well, he put that ball in a perfect spot where only his receiver could get it right there on the pylon. And the, the big sophomore receiver jumped up and made a, a great play, uh, basically a basketball play. You're boxing out and you use your big body to jump up and get it. And the kick is fielded by Williams. Williams 
out to the 30. And he's going to be brought down at about the 33. The ball came out. The ball came out. He fumbled the football. I don't know if they had blown it dead, but the ball came out before he went down. I don't, he may have landed right back on top of it. So middle, or Strom Thurmond will get the ball here. Oh, that was close. You got four minutes left. You still got some timeouts left. Uh, you don't have to get in a rush here and start throwing it around. You got a really good kicker. Yeah. So you can still use your big back and uh, churn out some yards. Yeah, I expect to see Jaquan Edwards a whole lot on this series. And he's averaging eight or nine yards a carry, so uh, it won't take you long to get in field goal range if that's the route that Coach Hillary decides to take. Here we go, folks. If you're just tuning in, you have missed a barn burner. 21-21, fourth quarter, 4.05 to go, and here's Edwards. Edwards, a little bit of room to the left. He'll have a first down. It has gotten loud here, folks. Juan Edwards with a nice run. First and 10, Strom Thurman, 334 and counting. They are about 58 yards away. And might have been some movement up front. Here's Edwards, though, to the right. Edwards with some room. Edwards with a block. He's inside the 30. He is down to the 24-yard line. Jaquan Edwards with his biggest run of the night. And, yeah, his longest run of the season, Nathan's pointing out, his longest before tonight, uh, coming in tonight was 27 yards. Not only was it the biggest in terms of yards, it was the biggest in terms of what it's going to do for his team. It puts them in a great position now where they can really be patient. Yeah, there's no need for them to get impatient and start throwing the ball. Um, Edwards is getting as many yards as he wants. He's getting them by the chunk. So, you know, you yeah. got three and a half minutes left. You still got timeouts. I just keep giving it to Edwards. Watch the blocking downfield to give him some extra yards from Tyreek Williams. You know, sometimes you don't have to just knock a guy over. Sometimes it's just shielding him out of the way. And that's what he did there. 34-yard run, longest of the season for Edwards. And it set Strom Thurmond up inside the 30. This, uh, and there's some of the crew having some fun down on the field during our Napleton Infinity of against the timeout. We've talked all night about how well the, the kids from Millen Valley have played, and they've showed a lot of heart. But this line for uh, Strom Thurmond has also played really well. They've opened up some huge holes. Well, crazy, crazy ball game here. It was 14 to nothing Strom in the first quarter, and we looked like we were headed for what we had last year, a one-sided game. But Midland Valley has just fought their way back in. They've made plays on offense, and they've used that short passing game to keep Strom Thurman off the field as well, Coach. As one of the Midland Valley coaches having some fun with our crew. Oh, and they got away with maybe an illegal substitution, Nathan pointing out, as they hand it to Edwards again. Edwards, oh, and he breaks a tackle, and Edwards is going to score a touchdown. He broke a tackle, and he goes 24 yards. We said we'd see Jaquan Edwards. That whole drive was Jaquan Edwards in that front line. Four rushes on that drive by Edwards and, and a touchdown. We got a player hurt for Millen Valley. Got a player down. Got a player down on the field. And it might be our Cohen. Yes, yeah, Tyrese Cohen, the scholar of the game for Midland Valley. So we hope he's all right. And boy, was that an impressive answer by Strom Thurmond. And, but if you're Strom, if you're, you know, Coach Hillary's going to be saying after this game, if they hold on, yeah, guys, that was great, but where has that been? And, you know, but he got pass happy. He said the offense did a little bit in the first half. They did a little bit in the second as yeah. well. You know, kind of went away from Edwards. Look at that night for Jaquan Edwards. 24 carries, 215 yards, two touchdowns, including what might be the game winner. And it looks like Cohen is just cramping. Savannah's down there, and that's a good sign. You'd rather it be a cramp than anything else for sure. Well, the way the uh, offense has been playing for Midland Valley and, and the way Tanner White's been throwing the ball around the park, you know, this is going to be a, a real important uh, extra point. Yeah. Uh, Thurman needs to get this extra point. Lawson Real last year. I don't know if he missed one or none. He had some kind of crazy streak where he made so many extra points last year. They had such a good offense. 
he got out there a lot to kick extra points. As there you see Cohen coming off the field. That is no fun getting a cramp. Nothing you can do with it, really. And Nathan pointed out some good sportsmanship from some of the folks from Strom Thurman. Uh, Lawson Reel will kick the extra point, and this is huge. This makes it a seven-point ball game. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. So it is 28-21. We will take a timeout and come back with the final 307. It's WJBS Sports Game Night Live. Strom Thurman now after the extra point leads at 28-21. We are back, Strom Thurmond leading Midland Valley after the touchdown run from Jaquan Edwards, who has had a marvelous game. 215 yards rushing and two touchdowns. And as we're getting scores coming in from around the area. And I don't know that there's any more exciting game than we got right here tonight. And that kick's gonna go into the end zone. And North Augusta is going to roll tonight, 40 to seven, the final score. They beat Lexington. Cross Creek holds on to beat Westside. Patriots putting up a good fight tonight. Yeah, they played well tonight. 26-20, the final. ARC blanks Josie, 38 zip. I'm not going to give you all of them though, because uh, Nathan and Zach will have all the scores, highlights, and all the info you need coming up on Football Friday night. The area's only 30-minute show dedicated to high school football. 11:35 on WJBF. You got three minutes left, and uh, Miller Valley's going to need a little magic from Tanner White and Sheehan to tie this game up here late in the fourth. Yeah, Tanner White. Oh, and Trey Moore was coming in, and boy, they did a good job keeping him from the quarterback. You know, it, Will Sheehan has been his guy, but Sapp has stepped up. The sophomore who they threw the lob to, I mean, they he, he's found some other guys to help. Yeah, especially here in the second half. Yeah. He's used some other receivers, and, and they've stepped up and played well. Well, Strom Thurman's Trey Moore went busting in there. And you can tell Midland Valley has done some homework because Andrew Jenkins is new to the area, but he knew who number 77 was. They've double teamed him a lot tonight. The Midland Valley coach is giving some signals. And their quarterback is in a shotgun. Tanner White looking to throw, and here comes Moore. Oh, my goodness. The helmet comes off. That might be a flag. I don't see one, though. Whoa. Well, Tanner White's going to have to come out for a play if his helmet came off. Yes, yeah, and that's a huge blow to Middle Valley. He sort of, not to defend more, but he did sort of get blocked into him, and his hand just happened to be up high. I don't think he was intentionally trying to clothesline him. That's not going to make White feel any better. Looks like he, yeah, look, he busted his lip a little bit, some blood on the lip there. As you see, watch this, he got pushed, and more, and the quarterback kind of went into his area. He wasn't trying necessarily to do it. Yeah, you're going to have a hard time in this area blocking yeah. big Trey Moore one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you, plus, you're bringing in a new player at quarterback. Yeah, you might, I was Nathan saying, take a timeout here. They're going to roll the QB out, and he throws it complete. Into the flats to the sophomore, oh, great block. Woo! Raquan Jackson hit A.J. Valentine. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Valentine who hit Jackson earlier on one of our paint center hits. Yeah, I don't know. It was definitely Valentine who laid the hit earlier, but wow, good block there. That is the play that in Georgia is now illegal. That, that block right there in Georgia would be a flag now. We have seen some incredible hits in this game. Yeah, we... We have had, yeah, four or five really good ones. I don't know that any beat Washington's uh, on the quarterback. Here comes White back into the game. That pass is caught. It is caught. I tell you who stepped up tonight. I'll tell you who has stepped up tonight. That is Starlings, the sophomore receiver. You got fourth and about a foot. Sophomore receiver coming of age tonight. But that was fourth. Well, they gave him the, 
It is a first down. Big fourth down play there. Got it by about a foot. White's back to throw. He's under heavy pressure. Yeah. He escapes the rush. What a good run by White. What a hard-nosed run for another first down. Yeah, White, I tell you. Down to 54 he seconds He is tough left. as nails, yeah. Coach. Yeah, 54 seconds left, so they're trying to hurry up and get some play calls. And I had my headset go out. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Jumping in and saving me. There we go. And White to throw it, and that's incomplete. 45 seconds left. Now, Tanner White, he's not your 6'5", 220-pound quarterback, but I don't know that any of those are as tough as he is. He took a shot to the mouth a moment ago, and he's come right back. He's thrown for over 250 yards tonight. Well, here's the line. you got to make sure you find Trey Moore and uh, – Number 22, Sean Miles, make sure you get a block on them because they're going to put some heavy pressure. All right, here we go, 30 seconds. Yeah, they're going to throw it. Oh, and he's hit as he throws. It's incomplete. It's going to be fourth down. So let's see what they can do here. Fourth down. Midland Valley needs a play. All right, coach. All comes down to this. They have got to get across midfield. He's got to throw it in a hurry. He's got a man that's caught. He's got to get down, though, just 14 seconds, and he's hit. Uh, you're going to have to hu hurry up here and spike it and stop the clock with 12 seconds. That'll give you a, a good one or two shots at the end zone. And he is going to spike it. So 10, boy, two, two seconds ran off on that spike. We are at Midland Valley, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's got 280 yards passing, but he needs a little bit more. Yeah, I'd look for the big sophomore receiver in the end zone. You're going to have to go deep here and, and, and chunk it to the you know, end zone. The problem is you're going to have to throw it 50 yards in the air. Uh, you know, can he throw it that far? And and you're also going to have to have time to, do, yeah, exactly. to, to be able to do it. And you got to be able to block Trey Moore to be able I to I think get you go two, two pass. You almost have to try two plays. Yeah, here. you can try to get a little quick out here and get, yeah. get out of bounds. Yeah, and unfortunately, the slant has been their big play, but – and you can't scramble around a lot. You just don't have time. They are going to throw it. Little trick play. Sheehan's going to throw it deep. He's open. He's got a man. And it's going to be a pass interference. Got to be, right? The flag is down. Now, this 15 yards is huge because now your quarterback can throw it in the end zone. Sheehan, though, looked pretty good there. Yeah, I'm not real sure what uh, the defensive back for Strom Thurmond was doing there. Coach Hillary will not be happy about him getting behind him by yeah. five yards yeah. with uh, three seconds left on the clock. You can't let the receiver just run by no, you like you can't that. let him behind you for sure. Boy, Sheehan has had a good game all around, and there he showed you he could throw it if he needs to. It has come down to this, 3.3 seconds left, 28-21. Midland Valley's got the ball. they got to heave it into the end zone, and – Hopefully, one of their guys make a play. Number 18, Starlings, is their tallest receiver. Let's see what they do. Coach Jenkins brought out a really nice trick play there to get them 15 more yards. They're at the 28. Well, now Thurman's got some guys back deep, some of their big, tall defensive backs. Well, he's going to heave it up into the end zone, and it's intercepted. And he throws it up, and there was, his receivers kind of went to the middle of the field, and he threw it to the side. And, hey, nothing to hang your head about if you're middle of the alley. I know it's easy for me to say and tough for the kids to take, but they have played themselves a heck of a ball game tonight. Both teams, the, the game was really well played. Yeah. Both teams played hard, and, uh, you know, uh, 
strong Thurman team comes out with the victory, but Miller Valley definitely hey. uh, has nothing to hang their head about, and, and, and they're an up-and-coming team. I'm going to tell you what, we've got some good young coaches in the area. We, we might have another one on our hands here at Andrew Jenkins. Yeah, they, they definitely showed a lot of promise tonight. And, uh, you know, it, it's still early in the season, so Millen Valley can, uh, you know, turn this thing around and get on the winning track, especially when they get into region play. Yeah, they played a very tough opening schedule, no question about it. And they showed a lot of moxie, a lot of heart. Keep in mind, one of their big plays tonight was the sophomore receiver. Another big play for a first down was a freshman running back, so a young team. But like you said, you got to credit Strom Thurmond. When they needed a drive, they put it in the hands of that offensive line and Jaquan Edwards, and they made it count. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think that's what's going to take Thurman deeper in the season because they have this strong uh, running game and a strong defensive team, and, and, and that's what's going to help you when you get into region play and then get into state playoffs. Well, and they've also got a sophomore quarterback that you you think is only going to get better. He's still young, still kind of feeling his way around a little bit. Had a few miscues tonight, but bottom line, that is a big win for Strom Thurman and a valiant effort by Midland Valley. And Miller Valley still got a tough region uh, road ahead. You know, you, they, they play in the region with North Augusta and play in the region with uh, South Dagan. So they got some, some uh, good competition ahead of them. And, and this game against Thurman should give them some confidence that they can play with some of those bigger, stronger teams. Well, you're right. And we saw, we've, we've seen that from some of the teams we talked about earlier this year that we've seen. You know, they're going to struggle a little bit with the schedule they play early. And then let's see when they face their size competition. And... Midland Valley, they got him a quarterback. They got him a player that's not afraid to get out there and mix it up at QB2. But in the end, it's Strom Thurmond moving to 3-0. They win it 28-21. Midland Valley will drop to 0-3, but nothing to hang their head about. Their quarterback threw for 280 tonight. That is Tanner White, the junior. Also, Will Sheehan with a great game. Several catches, two nice kick returns. Blocked well downfield, almost completed a touchdown pass at the end of the game. On defense, Tyrese Washington was outstanding for Miller Valley. Fantastic tonight. So, great efforts from Midland Valley. And then, of course, for Strom Thurmond, you got to talk about that offensive line and Jaquan Edwards. They were outstanding. Defensively, it was a team effort, but the guy who leads that charge is Trey Moore for sure. And uh, Definitely he was Trey, outstanding. Trey Moore is uh, one, you know, one of the better defensive players in the area, and, and Millen Valley had their hands full tonight. He was making plays all over the field. When he wasn't making plays, he was taking up blocks, yeah. and it was freeing up other guys like uh, Deshaun Miles or A.J. Valentine that could flow around and, and make some plays. Absolutely. And let's go down on the field for an Augusta. Hold on a second. We were, we're going to wait just a moment uh, as Savannah – Savannah's trying to corral the coach, Coach Hillary, but right now he's involved in a little bit of a song with his team. And we'll get him over here in just a moment. And uh, also, in a moment, we'll introduce you to our McDonald's Offensive and Defensive Players of the Game. We do it each week, sponsored by our friends from McDonald's. And we'll do the, we'll, we'll get Coach Hillary here in just a moment, and uh, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back and wrap it up with our Players of the Game and some final thoughts on what has been a gorgeous night. Coach Hughes, thank you so much for being with us, Coach. Well, I, you know, I enjoyed it. I, I always like coming out here and, uh, yeah. and helping you guys out. And, uh, you know, it's always a thrill for me to get back to the games and see yeah. some different teams that I normally don't get to see. And, you know, what a great atmosphere you know, tonight here at Miller Valley for a football quick, game. Real quick. <laughs> Congrats. Two teams that really played hard. And if you didn't hear us introduce them earlier, Chris Hughes, a former coach at Richmond Academy, now an assistant principal at Westside and former two-sports star at North Augusta back in his playing days. And we appreciate him filling in tonight as John Hart is cheering on his Georgia Bulldogs. Let's go down on the field. Savannah Strom has uh, victorious, but I don't know how happy a coach she, they, she's got. Let's go down on the field. That's right. I'm here with Coach Hillary, who has um, come out victorious in this game, despite some worries that happened in the second half. Tell us about those. What happened to you? Um, just my hats go off to uh, Midland Valley. Uh, coach Jenkins does a good job. Those guys gave everything they had. Uh, they don't have nothing to hang their head, head about. Uh, we was, luckily, we was able to make a play at the end and uh, get a couple stops. But those guys played lights out, and uh, we're very, very fortunate. You have a real player in Edwards as a running back. Um, you have to be proud of him. Talk about what it means to your offense to have that and how you're going to use that next week. Uh, it's big. You know, we got a sophomore quarterback who's still kind of learning the ropes. And uh, just to be able to hand it to Quan, uh, he probably had 30 carries tonight. Uh, that was huge. And uh, he's going to keep carrying us, and we're going to keep uh, feeding it to him. 
well, you've got a great defense line also. And so that's going to come as an asset, too. Talk a little bit about um, how much it means to have that strong defensive line to, uh, to tackle those offenses. Trey Moore is relentless. Um, you know, a major college football player, he gets after it every snap. Um, early on, they was kind of running it away from him, and he wasn't able to make a bunch of plays. But he just stayed at it. He got a high motor, and uh, he was able to make some plays at the end that really, really helped us. Uh, and, uh, you know, Tybo does a good job when he get in there. But the whole front did a good job tonight, I thought. We got to get better in the pass game, some pass coverage stuff. Um, but that's why we play the game, and that's why we go back to the film room and uh, try to improve every week. Thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations on the win, and good luck next week. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you, Savannah. We'll take a quick timeout, and we will be back with our Offensive and Defensive Players of the Week from McDonald's and some final thoughts here from Midland Valley as WJBF Sports Game Night Live. And we're back here where Strom Thurmond takes uh, care of business, but boy, they had a struggle on their hands from Midland Valley. The Mustangs are 0-3, but as the uh, coach, uh, Coach Hillary said from Strom Thurmond, nothing to hang their heads about. They played a great game. In the end, Strom Thurmond goes 2-3-0, uh, and 0, staying unbeaten with that 28-21 victory. Uh, we've got our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game down on the field, so let's go to Savannah Strom and Tom Powers for the introductions. Oh, well, I tell you what, guys, can we go ahead and shift gears and show us our hit of the game? Is that possible, Chris? We got our Augusta Paint Center hit of the game. We had a bunch to choose from, Coach Hughes, but hard to beat this one. Tyrese Washington uh, giving us the honors. Yeah, he comes untouched off the edge and, and makes a great play. And he jarred the ball loose, and it was picked up. Almost a score, but, hey, Jaquan Edwards made a big play there, too, with the tackle. But uh, Augusta Paint Center hit of the game, and it was a good one. Tyrese Washington of Midland Valley. Congratulations to him. And at the end of the year, a really nice, fun moment at our banquet uh, when we do our all-CSRA team. Uh, that uh, will be televised live on WJBF in prime time. We'll announce the hit of the year. Uh, so that is certainly in the running, no question about it. And by the way, Football Friday night coming up at 11.35. You'll want to tune in. We had a couple of barn burners, not just here. I'm not going to give them away, but Barnwell had their hands full tonight. So did Washington County. You'll find out how they came out if you watch WJBF Game Night Live with Nathan and Zach coming up at 11.35. And uh, I believe, trying to get the players down there now. There we go, football Friday nights. And I know, Coach, back when you were coaching, I'm sure the players, they knew what was the highlights that were coming. They know what was happening. Don't they? Oh, oh, definitely. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, when we would have our, our post-game meetings and uh, they would try to get out as quickly as possible so they could get home and watch football <laughs> Friday night. And, um, you know, especially when we had a big game and we won, uh, they wanted to see what you guys would have to say about them or show some highlights. And, yeah. you know, we had a lot of highlights tonight. We did, uh, sure did. And uh, so many good plays. And we mentioned Tanner White and Will Sheehan and company from Midland Valley. And ja Jaquan Edwards was just outstanding. Uh, 215 yards rushing tonight. And uh, also, uh, another player I thought that played well for Midland Valley uh, offensively, a couple of plays made by Holloway. Dante Holloway showed a little speed tonight, and they're going to need that, and Halston. They're going to need those two guys once teams start keying on Edwards a little more. All right, let's go down to the field. Savannah has corralled our players of the game for McDonald's. Let's see who they are. Yep, that's right. I'm down here. I'm with Tom Powers. First, we're going to talk to you, Mr. Powers. Yes, ma'am. You are with McDonald's, and you have been a part of this Game Night Live partnership for a while now. What does it mean to you to partner with us on this high school football journey that we go on every single year? We love supporting all the high school football games and academics all through the CSRA. McDonald's is involved in every school through the CSR. We love it, and the Border Bowl to go along with it is great. That's exactly right, and we certainly appreciate that. And now, without further ado, these guys are celebrities right here. We can't even track them down on the Strom Thurmond sideline, okay? All right, we have, for our defensive player of the game, number 77, Trey Moore. Coach Hillary was talking about him being a collegiate-level player. What does it mean to you to have your head coach say things like that about you? Uh, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. Because he expects a lot out of you? Well, you certainly deliver. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. And then for our offensive player of the game, we have number 30, Jaquan Edwards. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, and you are linebacker turned star running back this year. What was that transition like for you? Um, 
I mean, I already know the defensive schemes and stuff, so I understand how defense is going to try to play us. So, I mean, I guess that's an attribute that I had that some running backs don't. And I'm a great offensive line. That's exactly right. You obviously have some assets that other running backs don't, okay? We, we saw it tonight. Congratulations to you two. Thank You're you. both star athletes. Now go celebrate with your team. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Savannah. Congratulations to Trey Moore and uh, Jaquan Edwards, our offensive and defensive players of the game from McDonald's. And thanks to Tom Powers and all the folks at McDonald's. We appreciate it. Well, tonight, uh, Jaquan Edwards had the game-winning touchdown, 215 yards, a monster game. and. Just final thoughts uh, tonight, Coach Hughes, what do you think? It was a, a well-played game between two teams that, uh, you know, have been trending in opposite directions. But both teams can uh, use this game moving forward, especially as they move into region play. Strom Thurman, of course, is one of the better teams in the area and, and you know, a state power that, that looks to not only improve to region play but then deep into state playoffs. Um, Millen Valley is a young team, and uh, they play in a tough region. So these games, are, you know, early on against this tough competition is only going to help them as they get into region play. So, you know, both teams, although I'm sure Millen Valley is a little disappointed in the, in the outcome, of course, when you lose. But, you know, they definitely have some things to hang their hat on and uh, look to improve on and, and just improve as the season goes along. So, you know, another great atmosphere for high school football here in Millen Valley and, uh, and a great uh, well-played football game. All right, he is Coach uh, Chris Hughes, the former coach at Richmond Academy. We appreciate him joining us in the booth tonight. Also want to thank Nathan Edwards, our spotter and statistician, down on the field, Savannah Strom, and, of course, the entire WJBF crew, led by our producer, Chris McCarthy. We appreciate all their hard work. Tonight, Strom Thurman improves to 3-0 and with a 28-21 hard-fought victory over Midland Valley. We appreciate you watching the game. If you missed any of it, catch the rebroadcast at noon on Sunday right here on, uh, or actually on WJBF News Channel 6. We thank you for tuning in. Strom Thurman, a winner here at Midland Valley on WJBF Sports Game Night Live.